Nocturning, is it real? Should you do it? Easton's claim that you don't have to do it as much. Why, I'm about to show you. In the past, I have used an easy green press to press the arrow with two points in the end, glued unglued as long as it's a tight point, and find which side it likes to bend to the most. Some arrows have a big bias between the high side and low side. So if you use one of these, the difference between the highest side and the lowest side, the needle will move more. So I use this first to mark all of my arrows. What I found with aluminums, the high side and low side is about 180 degrees from each other. So this minus is the weakest side. That's where on the spine tester it bends the most when you have the spring loaded weight down on. And then the plus side is the stiffest side. So that's the side that's harder, harder to read because it wants to immediately roll over to the weakest side. So I always get the weak side first. It's the easiest one to spot out and then um, the stiff side. So very consistent on the aluminums. No issue getting that reading with aluminum. Aluminum is super, super well built. It's better, it's built way better than carbon is. So, and it probably will be the shaft I end up shooting, but we'll see. Every year I try to see if I can get a carbon to shoot better. So this is gonna be year two. We'll see. So what I found is out of about a dozen, we've got five where the mark that I got for the weakest side on the tester actually bent the same, okay? So we've got five of those. We have one where I originally built these arrows and I did the bend test and it seemed to want to always bias towards that original mark. So I have one like that. And the lowest side is, you know, quarter turn of a shaft away according to the spine tester reading. So, I mean, it's right in there, right? Between this eye with the silver and the dot, and then this, it had a plus, but I found that marking as the weakest side on the tester. So that's the mark that I'm going to initially tune at through paper. So we've got that. Okay, so this one, a couple that were tricky. These two were really tricky. My guess is the high side and low side is so close together that it depends on which plane you rotate it at. Like for half of the plane, it'll bias to one side, and then once you flip it upside down, it'll wanna bias to the other one. So I have this one with an I and a dot and a check mark, and the other side has an X on it, because it I thought it was the true side. So I'm gonna start on this one. You can see how the stiff side is always 90 degrees from the weak side on carbon. It's 90 degrees instead of 180. So a little bit more tricky. We'll put those here. And then the last two I've got, what did we find on these? So the last two, only two of them from my original spine testing mark on this a year ago, I've shot these to the spine tester here. Both lines overlapped on the weakest side. Only two of them out of a dozen. Problematic, lots of variables here. So what does this all mean? So on carbon, the high side and low side is so unclear. You can do both and see like, okay, generally where everything is at. 90% of the time, half of your dozen is going to be spot on with the static spine tester. The other half is going to be like 50-50 between two sides. Now, because I have these grouped, I'm going to be shooting them through paper and we're going to see exactly what happens with these arrows for knock tuning without fletching. And we can keep the bow in tune. We can also take the bow out of tune with the limb shift and see how each arrow shoots. Assuming that I have good form, assuming that I shoot good shots through paper and I'm not shooting too far away from the paper, which will correct things too quick or too close where it's just like, it's me in front of the paper, if you know what I'm saying. So another tip with paper tuning, make sure that your target, your paper is the right height for you to shoot through as well as far enough away from the target. I went to one guy's house one time and he's gonna laugh when he sees this. He had this amazing paper tuner thing built in his like basement and he always got bullet holes. And I was like, dude, the arrow is touching the target when it hits, he didn't know. So anyway, yeah, let's go on to knock tuning.